This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Giles. We're glad to have all y'all here, here in the sanctuary and here in our virtual worship space. Um, you can see that today the table is set for World Communion. Our creative worship team worked hard to bring a colorful and vibrant celebration of the feast. We also are glad to have some paintings of strangers on the chancel. These are done by our, one of our new members, Susanna Setta. I would encourage you all to come up and look at these images after worship. If you're not here in the building and want to come by one day during the week, we would love for you to see this. Over the course of the month, you will see other images of strangers who we pray with and for in worship each week. Um, today is World Communion Sunday, and um, we don't have our regular child care providers. So during or uh, right after the children's sermon, I'll take the children out to the nursery where we have a lesson, but we will not have child care today during Sunday school or meetings. There are lots of opportunities in the coming week to help get you in the holiday spirit. Which holiday? That's up to you. On Tuesday, we are going to be unloading pumpkins out back in the pumpkin patch. There'll be a big truck that comes, and there's lots of pumpkins that needed to, need to be unloaded. There is a sign-up genius that you can um, sign up on. That's really helpful, so if the time changes or the truck's running late or something happens, we have a way to let you know. Otherwise, Tuesday at 4 o'clock, we're planning to unload those pumpkins. If you're like, I'm more of a Christmas mood kind of person, you can show up on Monday at either 10 or 5.30 to help make the Christmas angels. That process has already been started, and there's always room for somebody to show up to help with some gluing, some cutting, some angel-making goodness. It's a great time, and we would love to see you there. As we turn our hearts and minds now to the business of worship, I invite you to take a deep breath in and breathe out. To give thanks for the unity of the Holy Spirit who gives us our life and breath each day and each week. For the unity of the Holy Spirit that carries that breath around the world and calling people from north and south and east and west to come and sit at table with strangers in the presence of God, celebrating in the goodness and the abundance that God has given us. Now with every breath, with every thought, with every word and action, let us worship God.
Please rise and join us for the call to worship. Today is World Communion Sunday. Join with our sisters and brothers, lifting up our praises in a myriad of languages. The stranger's words help us praise God in new ways. Other languages help us proclaim God's love for all. God of all peoples and nations, we praise you this day. Let us sing to the Lord. long without the refreshing, quenching gift of water. Come and receive this gift today as we enter into confession, knowing that the waters that are here are reminiscent of all waters of creation, knowing that these waters which pour and move and flow abundantly remind us of God's love which never ceases, God's mercies which never end, and the welcome that calls prodigals home. So come in fullness of confession and honesty and in grace. Let us pray. Often you come to us in the guise of the stranger. You come as the poor, the needy, the oppressed, the foreigner, the lost, the lonely, the forgotten, the unheard, the unmentionable, and the unknown. Yet we ignore the stranger and do not see your face in theirs. Forgive us and help us live in truth, for you are everywhere, O oh God. In waters of life, see God's love for all. Sisters and brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and free.
Let us pray. God of all nations, let your word be a mirror reflecting your image in the world. Let my voice be your voice as I read from your word. Let our minds and hearts be transformed as we hear the stories of strangers and discover the ways we are called to embody your love. Amen. The first scripture reading this morning is from Joshua 2, verses 1 through 21. Joshua, Nun's son, secretly sent two men as spies from Shittim. He said, go, look over the land, especially Jericho. They set out and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab. They bedded down there. Someone told the king of Jericho, men from the Israelites have come here tonight to spy on the land. So the king of Jericho sent word to Rahab, send out the men who came to you, the ones who came to your house, because they have come to spy on the entire land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. Then she said, of course the man came to me, but I didn't know where they were from. The men left when it was time to close the gate at dark, but I don't know where the men went. Hurry, chase after them. You might catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the flax stalks that she had laid out on the roof. The men from Jericho chased after them in the direction of Jordan up to the fords. As soon as those chasing them went out, the gate was shut behind them. Before the spies bedded down, Rahab went up to them on the roof. She said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. Terror over you has overwhelmed us. The entire population of the land has melted down in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea in front of you when you left Egypt. We have also heard what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites on the other side of Jordan. You utterly wiped them out. We heard this, and our hearts turned to water. Because of you, people can no longer work up their courage. This is because the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Now, I have been loyal to you, so pledge to me by the Lord that you in turn will deal loyally with my family. Give me a sign of good faith. Spare the lives of my father, mother, brothers, and sisters, along with everything they own. Rescue us from death. Then the men said to her, We swear by our own lives to secure yours. If you don't reveal our mission, we will deal loyally and faithfully with you when the Lord gives us the land. So she lowered the spies on a rope through the window. Her house was on the outer side of the city wall, and she lived inside the wall. Then she said to them, go toward the highlands so that those chasing you don't run into you. Hide there for three days until those chasing you return. Then you may go your way. The men said to her, we won't be responsible for this pledge you made us swear unless when we come into the land, you tie this red woven cord in the window through which you lowered us. Gather your father, your mother, your brothers, and your whole family into the house with you. Those who go outside the doors of your house and into the street will only have themselves to blame for their own deaths. We won't be responsible. If anyone lays a hand on those who are with you in the house, we will take the blame for their death. But if you reveal our mission, we won't be responsible for this pledge you made us swear. She said, These things will happen just like you said. She sent them away, and they went off. Then she tied the red cord in the window. Let me invite the children to come forward for a moment and sit on the front pew. And while you come, you're welcome to bring an offering for the Mattoon Soup Kitchen today. Wanna come sit down here? Oh no, John! Oh no, that's not what he wanted.
Good morning. So, Miss Liza just read a story about some spies, um, some spies that were coming into a city that had walls on it. I want you to stand up and show me if you were a spy that was trying to sneak into the city, what would you do? You'd get down. You'd probably, you probably really would get down. You would be sneaky and crawl along the floor, wouldn't you? <laughs> if you were, and then what? And hide behind things, okay. If you were a spy and let people know, if you were trying to be sneaky, would you wear your regular clothes? No, I would wear black. You would wear black? What else would you wear if you're trying to be sneaky? Hmm? You would wear what? Good shoes, yes. <laughs> you, might, you might wear something different. So s- spies are people who aren't usually part of the group. They're strangers, okay? And they're watching the other people, but they want to blend in. So if you're a spy and you were coming to our church, what would you try and how would you try and blend in? What would you wear or what would you do? Oh, you would try and wear brown stuff? <laughs> How would you blend into our church if you're a stranger who's a spy? Hmm? So, I know everybody's smiling. They're all thinking about it. You guys are God's special people that God sends into the world every day to do special things. And sometimes you might be a stranger. But you are sneaky to be able to take God's love and God's light with you, right? Because do you remember the song we sing? We sing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, right? So you take that light with you into the world. You're sneaky with it. And all of a sudden, you're somewhere at school or in the grocery store, and you're showing God's light in a way that they didn't expect. So tell me, what's one way that you can show God's love with people that you see every day? Maybe in your class at school, or maybe if you take gymnastics, sharing. Okay, that's something. What else? Hmm, that's a hard one, huh? Helping people, yeah. So we... um. One, we want to think about how we're taking, how we're being sneaky, and maybe not even so sneaky, but sharing God's love with people out in the world. And we also want to keep our eyes open for strangers who are coming in and to listen to what they have to say because they might have some different ideas that those spies in the story were being sneaky, but they were bringing God into the city. And there might be strangers who come to be with us who have ideas about who God is that we need to listen to them, right? So today is a special communion day, and some of us are going to go have another lesson about the meal Jesus makes for all of us. And it's for strangers and friends alike. And that's the amazing part of this meal, that we sit next to people we know and people we don't know, and they all share the light that God gives them. All right, so let's say a prayer before we go. Put your hands together and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear God, God, thank you for loving me. me. Help me me. to show your light light in the world world. and help me me. to welcome strangers strangers. who who share your light in my world. Amen. All right, let's go to the nursery if you want to come and have a little lesson. Our second scripture reading today will come from the Gospel of Luke. It is a reading where we encounter a stranger doing strange things whose ways are not the ways of the people. So listen as Jesus teaches and the Spirit speaks through our text today. 
Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. A woman who was there had been disabled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and couldn't stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said, Woman, you are set free from this sickness. He placed his hands on her, and she straightened up at once and praised God. Now the synagogue leader became incensed that Jesus had done this, for he had healed on the Sabbath. And he responded, There are six days during which you can do work, six days during which work is permitted. Come and be healed on those days, but not on the Sabbath. And Jesus, the Lord, replied, Hypocrite! Don't each and every one of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or your donkey from its stall and lead it to go get a drink. Then isn't it necessary that this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who has been bound for 18 long years, is set free from her bondage on the Sabbath. Now, when he said these things, all his opponents were put to silence. And all those in the crowd rejoiced at the extraordinary things that were being done. This is the word of God for the people of God. Today is World Communion Sunday. It is a day when we celebrate the wild, vast, unending, infinitely creative and imaginative diversity of God. That diversity which is found throughout the world where different cultures, different communities, different practices happen all to praise God. It is a day when we will push different styles of music on you, where you will encounter different images, where you will see things that maybe are a little less comfortable than some of the typical images or musical styles or things that you would have encountered in church. We have this day as a reflection of the truth that we are all created in God's image and reflections of God's image. Now what's weird about this day is it's also a day of great paradox and irony, and I want to be right up front about that. Because a lot of people will come to this and say like, it's World Communion Sunday, hooray, we get to do all this different stuff. And other people are going to come to the table and say, it's World Communion Sunday, eh. We're going to sing those songs in languages I don't know, and we're going to move in ways I don't know, and we're going to do stuff that makes me think like, it's not really my culture and I don't want to steal or take from them. and It's okay. And so for you, it's only one Sunday. And that's a terrible way to think about this because it shouldn't be one Sunday. When we talk about being the body of Christ, when we say the body is one body with many members, we have to be able to embrace that that body has children who will make noise, who will squirm, who will talk, who will say hooray, who will do things that are different. That that body has cultures who will wear different clothes, who will come with different attitudes and ideas, who will necessarily impact and change who we are. Because the truth of it is, God's love for the stranger is so profound that it makes the command central in the Torah. Each person is a reflection of God, and sometimes that reflection is beautiful and easy to remind us of God's love. Sometimes that reflection is beautiful and reminds us of how infinite God's love must be, because God can love that person too. Whether we are challenged by the stranger or blessed by the stranger is not a matter of our own righteousness. It is a matter of us being able to see from God's perspective. Because the stranger is a blessing. And these two texts today remind us that the stranger both expands into areas that we are not ready for them to be in yet, and encroaches on what we thought was our sacred turf, and as a part of that encroachment, helps us see that God is always bigger than we ever knew. The other brilliance about this is God has 
an obvious preference for strangers in the Bible. If you look throughout the text, you will find stories like the Tower of Babel, where God goes in and sees a community that's unified and makes it diverse. You will see the day of Pentecost, where God sees a community that's so diverse they have trouble understanding and brings ways for them to understand one another. You will see people getting upset because they are God's chosen people, and yet the deliverers for them are their oppressors, the foreigners, the immigrants, the aliens, the strangers, who God continues to pick. You will find that in the Bible, there is a story of a sheet that is lowered down full of all things that were once named unclean. And God says, what I call clean, you cannot call unclean. And Stephen and his ministry change to embrace as much wild openness as possible. Today is World Communion Sunday. And as we look at what that means, we find we encounter God in strange new ways. The beauty of this, though, is as much as we can identify the stranger, we can also be identified as strangers. Think about it this way. Have you ever gone to a dinner at somebody else's house? And you get there and you realize, oh, this is not my house. There are a number of clues. Maybe they serve plates that are like nice china and their silver pattern is different than your silver pattern, right? Maybe they're like super fancy and their napkins are not ripped off pieces of paper towel. <laughs> they're like actual fabric that somebody stitched. <laughs> Maybe they're super duper fancy and instead of having a plastic sheet underneath where the children eat, they just have regular rugs. <laughs> You can tell this is not my house when you encounter somebody else and then they serve food that is different than the food that you've prepared or would typically prepared. When the dish that you know is still done in different ways or comes from a completely different culture and you would taste it and you see how good God is because you are there with friends, with new people experiencing new things. In our stories today, we find people acting as God's people, as strangers in strange lands. Jesus goes into the synagogue and does what God calls him to do, right? He brings healing and teaching. He does this even on the Sabbath, even though that is forbidden, even though the culture would say, you don't do that today. Jesus is a stranger with different rules, with different behaviors, different attitudes, and he does something that is completely forbidden. He gets called out for this, and he says, you know what? You're a hypocrite. You don't get to talk to me like that. You untied your, your donkey, and you gave it water. You did work today. Do not talk to me about doing work when you are doing it yourself. It's unacceptable. And then this miracle of healing happens, and the people look at that, and they see what the outsider has done, and their understanding of what God can do is bigger. In the story of Rahab, you have spies, wildly inept spies. Here's why they're inept. If you're a spy, if you know you're a stranger going to a strange land, you should not go to a prostitute's house, because if the cultural practice that you are part of is one that practices circumcision, and the cultural practice of the community you're going into does not. You should not reveal all of yourself. <laughs> that is an obvious giveaway and should have been initial training for spies. <laughs> Rahab definitely knows that these people are not the people of the land. Even if they had dressed appropriately, spoken with the right accent, done everything correctly, as soon as they are naked, it is obvious why they are different. She also knows that the God they worship and follow has destroyed and made great fear in the land that she is now in. So she pushes them to make a pledge. And she says, please, I know who you are. I know what you're up to. I know who your God is. And I know what's about to happen. Because I have been paying attention and listening and seeing things. I understand this. Please help me find a way to bring life to the people I love and know. 
What a great attitude it is. And she makes this pledge. And as part of that pledge, the spies say, take a red woven cord and tie it in a place so that we see this. And that will be a symbol that you have made this pledge and made this commitment and that we will honor that pledge and commitment. It is not enough for her to simply go and say, I know who you are, keep me safe. They say, we will do that, and here's the terms of the deal. They lay it out. They give specific instructions on how to act in order to honor this pact. Our challenge is that we can both see the stranger and dismiss the stranger. We can be the stranger and be dismissed as strangers. I'm sure you've gone to a place and been told, that's not how we do it here. I'm sure you've come to church and heard your favorite hymn sung in a different way and thought, mm, that's not how we used to do it. I've never had this personal experience because my seat is always reserved, but I'm sure, based on reports I've heard, you've had an experience where you come to church and somebody has taken the bold step of sitting in your pew. <laughs> or worse, they're sitting in like your grandmother's pew that she had sat in her whole life and she was like a founding member of the church and so everybody knew that's where you and your family always sit. And then now, some visitor who happened to get here at like 15 minutes early sat in that spot and so you're going to do that gracious thing where you sit behind them, maybe gently remind them that that's your grandmother's pew, or maybe just sit there the whole time and think, the nerve. This person, mm, they don't know. And you lose the entire experience of worship because you obsess about the idea of the slight that this person did. Maybe they didn't even intend it, but they did it. And you lose sight of what's going on around you. As I was preparing for the sermon, I thought, what's a hymn that everybody knows and loves? And I thought, Amazing Grace. And I thought, what happens if you type in hip-hop version of Amazing Grace? And I tell you what, there's a lot of them out there. And I didn't spend a lot of time on this, but I did not find one that I personally enjoyed. <laughs> and yet in listening to all these different versions of that song, I saw how other people were encountering, exploring, expressing a love of grace, a love of God, and a depth of faith that made me understand God in newer ways. It doesn't mean I liked it, but it does mean I think I grew a little bit. Our new actions lead us toward new understanding. And while the stranger can make things wildly uncomfortable because they want to join a committee but they don't want to meet at the time the committee otherwise met at because they have a family and they have work and they have other obligations that just don't mesh, that's hard. Or they want to come to a meeting but they don't drive at night because it's hard to see. And those are those challenges. And yet, we as God's people find ways to work together. World Communion Sunday is an invitation to embrace the stranger, to do new things in new ways and see that God is always there. Not that God is big enough, but that our box was too small to begin with. So take the red cord that you have and think like Rahab did with those spies and say, I am going to make a pact with you that I will do what I am called to do to live in new ways, and I tied one around my wrist so that when I get into those places where I'm like, well, this person just doesn't know what God wants them to do, I might see this and be reminded, maybe this person is actually the person speaking and not the other who I'm labeling. Maybe the challenge for me is not to judge, but to have compassion like Jesus did. For we are not called to be this, the Pharisees and religious authorities who say, here's who's in, here's who's out. We are called to be the hands and feet of Christ who walk towards somebody and say, ah, you need healing and it's the Sabbath 
What better way to help out? You're a foreign person in our land and need a place of shelter for the night? Let me help you find that place. Let this cord be a reminder that you are a child of God and so is the other you encounter. That should be our lesson in World Communion Sunday for listen as God speaks through these texts and speaks in the Torah through this passage of Deuteronomy. For we must do our parts. Clearly the Lord owns the sky, the highest heavens, the earth, and everything in it. But the Lord adored your ancestors, loving them and choosing the descendants that followed them, each and every one of you. You have been chosen from all people. That's how things still stand now. So circumcise your hearts and stop being so stubborn. Because the Lord your God is the God of all gods, the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, the awesome God who doesn't play favorites and does not take bribes. God enacts justice for orphans and widows. God loves immigrants. God gives them food and clothing. And that means you must also love immigrants because you were once an immigrant too. God loves strangers because you were also a stranger. Revere the Lord your God. Serve God, cling to God, swear by God's name alone. For God is your praise and God is your God, the one who performs and has performed all of the miracles and great awesome acts that you witnessed with your very own eyes. Your ancestors went down to Egypt with only a total of 70 people. But look around you. Look now. Look at the table spread for World Communion Sunday. The Lord your God has made you and all of God's children as numerous as the stars in the nighttime sky. From God's words to our ears, to our hands and feet. Let us continue to live into the call that we are given so that we may be a blessing to all people and be blessed by all of God's children in a myriad ways that we could not possibly imagine on our own. Amen. We are sharing stewardship moments where people talk about how their gifts and their giving impacts their faith and their connection to the church. Today we are blessed to hear part of Walter Burgess's story, so please direct your attention as we um, hear from Walter Burgess. One of you has gifts, and we are grateful for the gifts that you share, for the gifts of your time, your talent, and your treasure. As people of God, you share a unique perspective. So as the offering plate is passed, not only give generously and share what you have, but also see your reflection in the plate. Notice how God calls you and calls others, and how we are part of that church family together. Let us share our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts as we continue to worship God.
So what ways do you give your time, talent, and your treasure? Time is made up of a lot of elements, listening, giving advice, volunteering, and trying to enable others to join in the fun. Remember, Sunday is only the beginning. We have lots of other opportunities, teaching, Bible studies, gardening, choir, and mission projects have been part of my involvement. I treasure the relationships that it builds. Okay, Talent. I am limited in my talent. When you work on projects, you learn a lot about yourself. You have skills that help others and yourself. Occasionally, you learn that your talent is not great, and that's okay. At least you tried. Treasure. Treasure is the toughest one of these. Pledging is a commitment, and since every day, uh, since everything is God's, we can never give enough. It's like riding a roller coaster and trying to do your best. There are, once again, so many opportunities to give. Money, food, missions. I try to have a plan, but I always fall short. Thank goodness for God's grace. How does your giving impact your faith? Faith is a, another roller coaster. We go up and down. When I do what I should, I feel closer to God. Giving of my time gives me feedback from my fellow church members and our community. It tells me God is active in our world, even when things seem grim. The smiles, the thank you notes, and your support builds my faith. And how does your giving connect you with St. Giles? St. Giles has always been a place for all people. I don't connect my love of St. Giles as much to my giving as to what St. Giles gives me. The smiles, the hugs, and even the teasing I am subjected to because of my timeliness. All of those build my love of you as my friends and helps me to work, helps us to work together to serve God and other people. Sisters and brothers, this is God's table, a table of joyful feasting, a place where we are invited as strangers to come and recognize that neighbors and kinsfolk we are. That when we come here, we are not divided by any of the divisions or labels that we have either given ourselves or have been imposed upon us by the world. Here, we are sister, brother, and child. We are one family at one table with all of God's children around the world. So come from east and west, north and south, and all the places in between, Come to the table whether you are so certain of your own self-righteousness that you are ready or so riddled with your own doubt that you are the blessed one that Jesus calls sinner. Come to the table being fully present, fully aware, and fully open to the blessings that God has this day. For as you can see, there are no limits, no walls, no boundaries, and all are welcome. So come. Let us pray. God, we are grateful. We are grateful for the gifts that you give us, for the many ways you find to teach the same lesson, that we are strangers in strange lands, that the world is a temporary home, that the foreigner that we encounter is a blessing to help us see that you are bigger than we could ever imagine. As we come to the table, may we be like your people, 
open to the possibilities that are present. Pour your spirit upon these gifts of cup and of bread, that as we partake in this meal, we might be transformed as they are transformed. Let your spirit fall upon them, so that the cup we drink may be your blood and the bread we eat may be your body and our hands and our feet and our breath may be your hands, your feet and your voice to the world. Shape our minds so that we might lift up songs and praises and hallelujahs with your choirs of angels and ancestors and prophets and teachers present and in the past. That we too might proclaim that you have come that you have died, and that you live again. Let this be a joyful feast and a joyful blessing for all of your children. Bind us together as we pray in your name with your teaching, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus gathered the ones who he loved, his faithful disciples, with him, and taught and shared a meal. After the meal... Jesus took bread that was left over and said, This is my body, given to you. So take and eat. And when you do so, remember. And after breaking the bread and giving thanks, he took the cup and said, This is the cup of the new covenant. Shed in my blood, which is given for the forgiveness of sin for many. So take and drink of it. Do so and remember. Now as our elders come forward, sisters and brothers, I invite you to remember to see in the fullness of God's love, to taste and see the goodness that is before you. For these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Communion today will be served by intinction, which means an usher will come and invite you to walk forward. If walking is not something that is something you are capable or comfortable doing right now, Just remain seated in the pew, and we will come and serve you where you are, and it will be our deep joy. When we come to serve you, or when you come to us, we will take a piece of bread. That piece will be generous because God's love is generous. You will be invited to take that piece of bread and dip it into one of the cups, and then take part in the feast, and you will taste and see that God is good. If, however, gluten is not your friend, do not worry because Jesus was also gluten-free. No gluten in Jesus. That was on a shirt one time I saw at Montreat. We do have gluten-free elements and individual cups that are sealed. So if that is something that is helpful for you or something that you want, please feel free to go to the baskets and take what you need. At the end of this feast, I will pray, but before praying, I will ask if all of God's children have been fed. If at some point you have not been served, please, without any hesitation, just say, me. I need more of God's love and grace, and you somehow didn't see me. And forgive that. I will be there, and we will make sure that all are fed. Come now, for the table is spread. The feast is ready. Let us come and taste and see that God is good.
Have all God's children been fed? Let us pray. God, thank you for these gifts. As my body digests and is nourished by this feast, may it also be transformed with your love so that where I look, I see. Where I listen, I hear. Where I touch, I feel. Where I am, I might be as you would be. Bless me and those who cross our paths so that we may be a blessing to all. We pray. Amen. What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. God is good. And all the time. Your charge is your work. It is our call. It is our sense of how God is asking us, pushing us, compelling us to be in the world. Let your red cord or any time you see the color red, remind you of the bigness, gigantity, wonder of God. That God is always greater than the way that we have framed God to be. Let the challenge of the stranger be the blessing of openness, so that as you encounter difference, you might see God everywhere. Our benediction today will be sung. Please find hymn 549 in your hymnal. The way that this is going to work is we will, you can either sing together for the first time through, or if this is an unfamiliar blessing, just listen as the choir leads this piece. And then what I want you to do is turn to somebody nearby and sing to them, offer the benediction as a blessing to a neighbor or a stranger in your midst. Let us sing and bless one another as we are blessed by God. <laughs> 